behold, Phytasus, Greek god of decay, or as the Romans called them, Taves. Not much is known about them, no symbols or myths, only mentioned in passing as one of the Nosoi, a horror released from Pandora's box. But even by ancient Greek standards, the information we have had is frightfully lacking. How did it come to be that something as important as decay, a force seen all around us, a force that has caused such great strife among not just our world, but even the stars themselves, is spoken of so infrequently? The answer is simple. Fear. The Greeks had always feared dead gods in their reminders. In the case of Phytasus, they were so afraid that they refused to even mention the horrid deities many myths, much less write them down. This fear had left Phytasus a forgotten primordial. Phytasus is a primordial god, born of a different realm, a realm belonging to other gods formed of absurdist amalgamations of symbolism that anchored them to reality. The symbols of Phytasus remain even now as vultures, worms, fungi, and frayed cloth. Now is a different time, with new gods, new to Phytasus at least. Phytasus, although similar to chaos in terms of age and power, had a very different involvement with the world and its inhabitants. While chaos reigns impersonal and distant, Phytasus is involved in every mortal life. They consider it a kindness. To everyone else, their existence is a curse, eating away at everything and everyone. It is of great importance to understand that Phytasus has always had a great issue with pride. Of course, as a great and powerful god, they weren't exactly wrong to act like they did, but humility and benevolence were sorely lacking the primordial dialect. In ancient Greece, you can find all the proof you need of that pride. Mount Olympus itself suffered because of it. Mount Olympus was the tallest mountain, reaching into the heavens, the one true home of the mighty Olympians. Phytasus, seldom worshipped and jealous of the Olympians, took roost upon the mountaintop, thinking status as an Olympian would garner followers. The Greek gods at this point were careful not to upset Phytasus, for Phytasus could make the gods age if it truly desired, so they let the primordial rest upon their kingdom. But as Phytasus sat upon the highest peaks, those very peaks began to crack and erode until the mountain crumbled beneath them. The gods were, of course, incredibly upset with this and began to argue among themselves. They all knew they had to remove the god of decay or their home would face annihilation. But if they attempted to force the primordial to leave, the immortals would face decay, time, age, mortality. Hermes, the trickster, was the one who finally acted. He spoke with the primordial. Oh, great physicist, why do you settle for this mountain? You are so grand. Why do you reduce your grandeur to that of us? The mortals have seen you. They love you. They worship you. Why don't you spend time with your new followers? The other Olympians did not like this plan. They found it disrespectful of the trickster to treat them as so insignificant. Physicists, on the other hand, was overjoyed at the thought of being worshipped, not finding anything wrong with these gods acting so lesser, and didn't hesitate to spend time with their human worshippers. Hermes had successfully gotten Phytasus to leave, but the damage was done. Giddy to reach their followers, Phytasus had slid down the side of Mount Olympus, tearing apart the mountainside, forever scarring Mount Olympus, forever trapping the mortals with decay, while the gods remained ageless. On a side note, the mixture of Olympus's scars and the gods' scarred pride made them wish to punish Hermes. They had thought of different methods, from chaining him to a mountain, to blinding him, or even just killing him. But it could not be done to harm Hermes in such ways and make them lose their fastest messenger. Instead, Hermes was punished in a way that would force him to continue working. Burning nails were forced to the bottoms of his wingless shoes. The nails were forged by Hephaestus, so that Hermes could not set foot upon the earth, or the nails would begin to become even hotter. And thus, Hermes became trapped in the sky, forced to send messages between the gods, never resting, for the pain would be too great. That last part doesn't have much to do with Phytasus, now known as Fidelius, but it would just be wrong to leave something that major out of the story.